Hey, sister, welcome back to the show. I am very happy you can join me once again. All right, sister, so how is this challenge going for you? You know, if you were joining me last week in the last episode, last episode was about making room in your heart for God's word. And I invited you to join me on my Facebook group, The Intentional Christian Woman. So if you join me, welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you there. If you haven't joined, don't worry. It's not too late. It is a seven-day challenge, but here's the beauty of it. You can repeat, repeat, repeat. So it's in three easy steps, and it's to help you have the Word of God in your heart, but by first decluttering your heart, second, memorizing Scripture in a very easy and practical way, and then third, you just repeat. They're not that complicated, but here's the thing. You need the accountability, sister. I need the accountability. This is for me, too. I am doing this literally as we speak. So, sister, I invite you to join me. Go ahead and join the group if you haven't done so. All right, sister. So I'm going to read your review before we start the show. And the next review in Apple Podcasts comes from my friend Jackie, my dear friend Jackie. Thank you, Jackie, for the review. She gave me five stars. She says, Rosie has been an amazing spiritual mentor for me and the women in our Bible study group. Rosie has a true connection with God and has helped me feel welcome at her church and all the events. Praying her podcast is heard all around the world. I also followed her YouTube channel. Aw, thank you, Jackie. I do have a YouTube channel, by the way, sister. The YouTube channel mostly picks up my audio. It's called The Intentional Christian Woman. And basically, I do have some shorts in there if you are interested. Sometimes I'll put up some Bible verses up there for 15 seconds and just kind of encourage and I'll pop in and just share some things on my heart. So feel free to join if that's like your thing, you know. Otherwise, just stay here on the podcast. No worries. All right, sister. I am super excited because I have a special guest today. Sister, have you ever wondered if there is a way to get your energy back? Maybe you have unhealthy boundaries. Maybe there's things that you can say no to. Well, this sister of ours, Grace, I'll introduce her in the podcast. She's amazing. She she shares with you her story about how she was able to overcome a lot of these unhealthy and and make these these unhealthy boundaries um, out of her life, basically put them out of her life and have new healthy boundaries so that she now has more energy. And of course, other things that she did to help her. You know, it's amazing that we hear from one another things that have worked and we can always learn from each other. I know for me, I also have developed boundaries as well and other things that have helped me with my energy. And I'm still learning to this day. I am no expert, sister. We're all in this together. All right, sister. So I welcomed, I welcomed her to my show because I know that she has so much value that she could bring you. So, all right, without further ado, let's get started. Are you so busy and overwhelmed that you can't get enough time to connect with God? Are distractions robbing you of your time with Jesus? Is your motivation to spend time in the Word just not what it used to be? Do you want to be more consistent in your personal Bible study? Welcome home, sister. I'm Rosie, a mom, wife, teacher, and devoted disciple of Jesus. And like you, I struggle to stay consistent with my Bible study. When life got busy, I felt so overwhelmed that spending time in God's Word was no longer a priority. In my hardest seasons of life, my motivation to be in the Bible grew weak. I lost my convictions and walked away from God. But by His grace, my faith was restored and with the conviction to never take God's Word for granted again. If you're tired of letting the enemy steal away your time, energy, focus, and motivation, then sister, this podcast is for you. So go reheat your coffee, dust off your journal and Bible, and get ready to take back your time. Hello, my sisters. Welcome back to the show. I am so happy to have you with me once again. Today, I have a very special guest. She is an amazing woman that I recently met, and I'm, I had such an honor to meet her, and she's going to be here. I've invited her to my show because I found something really special with her. Actually, her and her husband host a show that's brand new, so it is called Grace. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Let me, uh, this is a little blooper here (laughs) it's okay it's called let's unpack that see this is we got to be real on this podcast right (laughs) let's unpack that with alex and grace and grace i am really happy that you're joining me so uh, with that said i would love for you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself yeah no worries it's a mouthful so (laughs) don't feel (laughs) pressure to get it right yeah thanks so much rosie for having me on um 
yeah so me and my husband are the hosts of let's unpack that with alex and grace it's also a faith-based podcast and that's pretty much what i'm committing my time to do these days is to build that podcast because we just recently launched um we're also we have a huge heart for community so we host a small group and lead that but we also have a vision to expand our podcast into more of a ministry and with in-person like community events and virtual ones as well um but yeah we're based in the bay area if anybody knows like uh, the san francisco bay area we're kind of i would say like 40 ish minutes away from san francisco down south um and my background is i did my whole career in marketing i actually used to work at google for about four years um felt the lord transition me and and tug me out to um join our local church to be their director of marketing and communications for about two two and a half years um and then last year i felt that undeniable tug again from the Lord to step out into the unknown um, and to pursue this content creation to provide value and resources for people to really um, be equipped to live out their faith in their everyday lives. So that's what me and my husband currently do. Awesome. Thank you. So yeah. let's let's talk a little bit about uh, taking back your energy. I know that you have a yes. story there and you've overcome a lot you know, in this show, this new direction of this show that I'm, I'm kind of just recently changing, I'm not changing exactly everything, but something that I've noticed when I've asked multiple sisters recently, um, I, 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 you're one of the sisters, but there's many um, that, you know, that, that have told me um, one of the things that really can, can really hold you back from just having, um, let's say in my case, in my podcast, I emphasize having a good you know, time with God, like quality time with God. And, and of course, quality time with family, quality time with others, like just having a quality of life. But in this mm -hmm. situation with me, I, I focus on, on having good Bible study routines. And so I'm very interesting in knowing your story about taking back your energy through healthy boundaries, because I do believe that there are so many sisters that are listening to us, so many women that are listening to us who really go through that. And that really can take a toll on how they spend their time with God, how they even start their day. So tell us a little bit about that. Yes, Rosie, I love this question. <laughs> I love that you're talking about it too, because it is such, I really truly believe that if the enemy can't, um, sway us away from God's will, doing God's will, he'll try to separate us from God's presence. That's been something that the Lord has been continually reminding me of that when we spend time with God, it, does, it changes everything, right? And so th that's why there's so many competing things in our world that's trying to compete for our attention to distract us away from God and spending time with him and reading our, our Bibles, going deep in the word. Um, and so for me, I personally have gone through a big um, breakthrough in terms of this. I'm not perfect by any means. I'm still definitely working on it day by day. But um, I'll just quickly share that my most of my life, I grew up as a people pleaser. Um, just for context, for those listening, you can't see me visually, but I'm Asian American. So my parents, they actually immigrated from Asia. And for anybody else who has parents who are immigrants, you know that they teach you to hustle. <laughs> they have mm -hmm. this very um, hard work ethic where they, um, a lot of parents, they not just immigrants, but any parents, they kind of push you to work hard, you know, achieve. And um, the subconscious narrative that we kind of condition ourselves with is I have to achieve to prove myself. I have to um, please my parents, please other people, do these things yeah. to feel like I'm enough. And even if on the outside, we don't admit it because, you know, we go to church or we hear people say, you're enough, you're worthy, you're loved. Subconsciously, there's still scripts inside of us that that push us, um, like telling us you need to do more. And you know, what's interesting is I love that, you know, your audience here, we're speaking to women because I was telling my husband the other day, I was like, why is it that so many guys talk about how bored they are and that they're like trying to fill in their empty time? That's just such a foreign concept to me. And <laughs> I have not heard a single woman in my life say that they are bored. I know. <laughs> I've heard listen I've heard your podcast uh, I've heard the few, first few and every time it's the b word right yes it's like, you don't like word. the b word we no. don't like the b word I don't I was laughing yeah. the other day when I was listening to you again because I was like I don't like the b word either because how in the world do you even have time for that who right. has time to be bored oh right my I'm like that's a luxury like teach me how to be bored because I'm right. never bored oh I goodness. feel like as as women in society I, my hypothesis is that 
the cultural conditionings of being a woman has put so much unrealistic pressure on us. We have to be a great wife, a great mom, a great mm-hmm. career woman too. We have to be perfect in all areas and, yep. and a great daughter, friend, everything. And so, yeah, I think there's just so much lie, uh, so much in our heads that's lying to us about you have to be this unrealistic expectation. So anyway, fast forward, I um, thank, thankfully, thankfully to mentors and coaches and therapists uh, who are all Christian, all, you know, God fearing, they have helped open my eyes to see, hey, Grace, I think those, those things you're telling yourself, are they actually realistic? <laughs> and so by helping me unroot those lies over the years, um, I have just experienced so much more breakthrough, so much more freedom in this area. Whereas once before I was like chained, I just felt constantly overwhelmed. Like I have to please everything, do be everything to everyone, which meant I didn't have energy for the most important things, which was my relationship with God, my relationship with myself, my relationship to the people closest to me. Cause I was always trying to do, I was, I was just spread way too thin. Um, and so now, um, you know, in 2023, I'm still not perfect, but I will say God's helped me come such a long way um, to finally, I feel so much more empowered, more, more than ever before that knowing that I'm doing the things that God has called me to do. And I can say no and set boundaries with the things that I know he's not calling me to do. So absolutely. That's amazing. And that's so encouraging to hear that, you know, going through this and all the things that you've been learning. So Mm -hmm. um, tell us, Tell us like in what ways ha- has having healthy boundaries helped to increase your overall energy or maybe give us some examples. Yeah, totally. Um, so a really good book. I know so many people probably have heard of it before, but Boundaries by Dr. Henry Cloud, highly recommend. Um, it talks about how practically to set healthy boundaries, um, but in terms of the effect. So I will say from my personal story, um, it's hard to explain because it's just everything has changed in my life. I will say one tangible example is even this past year, actually, in the beginning of the year, I actually had a health scare. I was, my husband and I were in Hawaii, actually, we were having such a relaxing time, but all of a sudden, I felt like my heart didn't feel right. Like I I was having trouble breathing. Um, And it turns out, like, later, I got a checkup with a doctor, it turns out I was um, borderline at risk for prediabetes. And um, if I hadn't had that heart um, condition or that symptom, I wouldn't have been able to go to the doctor to check. And so that really spurred me and prompted me to be like, okay, I got to do everything that I can to prevent myself from becoming, you know, very unhealthy and um, needing to rely on the diabetic stuff and medicine and stuff. So I actually, for the first time ever in my life, I valued and prioritized my, my physical body and my health. I think so many times, um, especially if you're a high achieving person, you're like, oh, I got to just do work. That's the most important thing. I got to be productive or I got to serve my family or I got to serve other people. And you're not really thinking about your own body and your health as essential for your energy. But once I did that, it totally changed everything. So I started going to workout classes like two to three times a week, um, just starting out. And then I also started to eat healthier, like more fats and proteins and um, a bit less carbs, a bit less sugars. And in the past, I just had so much trouble like with that because I was so focused on I just want to lose weight and that didn't happen the way I wanted to. But this was a totally different philosophy of I just want to be a healthy, strong person. Um, And surprisingly, I realized by doing that, that by prioritizing my health and saying no to things that were taking me away from from doing that, I actually experienced so much more clarity and focus in my entrepreneurship journey. Like this podcast that we now, my husband and I now lead, it wouldn't have happened if I didn't prioritize my health because I was just, the clarity and the time that I spent with God, everything just like up leveled because I was so much more um, energized physically, emotionally, spiritually in all the areas. So that's just one example. You know, that's a great example. Um, I feel like I I did mention in this podcast of, uh, few months ago that I did there was something similar I went through except it was because of my gut health and Mm. I did um this 40 day um not a detox but it's like the reset um Mm -hmm. with a national board certified health uh, functional health functional medicine medicine health coach she's amazing she's still my coach we follow through I lost 10 pounds unintentionally but um I felt so much better after I did it and that what I realized with the food that I was eating and this is interesting because even though this show is not about food but that is such a good example because you know 
sometimes we really have to take a look at what's behind what's what's the uh what's hel- uh, not helping us feel as energized so yeah lack of sleep I definitely can relate to that. Even lately, it's been hard for me to really get good sleep. And mm-hmm. I see the effect of that. So I try yeah. to make, you know, my health coach is telling me I can do things to make it up and, and things like that. So that's helping yeah. me. But, you know, lack of sleep, lack of, um, you know, good food for your body. Um, and um, even exercise. Uh, mm-hmm. And I know for all of us, that means something different, because, you know, with some of us have kids and young kids. Mm-hmm. And so it's a little more difficult. So you may have to modify or do it a different way. But it's just, you really got to look beyond just, okay, you don't, you know, I always tell my sisters, don't like the devil wants to guilt you out Mm -hmm. all the time. And the thing is that just, you know, you may be, for example, you may be having like some days or times where you're like, I'm not in my word as much. Okay. I'll give an example because I'm so tired and Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I'm a sinner. I'm a bad person. That is Mm -hmm. not true. You know, that if you're not being intentional with that and you're trying to live a good life, but you're just not that's being like you're listening to the lies and you're being a little legalistic in that sense but then you're you're also just having to you're needing to like kind of think through like okay what's going on and have that conversation with god and maybe even get help uh, you know ask for help uh, let go of the pride ask for help um get a coach like you to get a therapist uh mm-hmm. get heal your emotions i talked about that too healing for damaged emotions i went through all that so like all those things affect the way we interact with god mm-hmm. exactly yeah. and it's it's not just like some people have this perception i used to have this perception too it's like i just need to pray more i just need to read the bible more and yes there is so much power in prayer and the bible it literally changes our lives but if you're doing if you're trying to do that without also addressing the the weeds underneath that's where you continue running into these recurring struggles because you're not realizing there's actually there's actually lies in your head that's feeding these unhealthy habits that you feel like I need to do it all I need to you know self-neglect I need to um you know Mm. I should I need (laughs) versus okay what is God actually telling me right now and how is he lovingly and compassionately inviting me to sit with him and have real life with him instead of just trying to strive for it on my own um so yeah I I totally agree with what you said absolutely yes so what advice would you give our listeners I'm sure you have plenty but maybe a couple of one or two pieces of advice that you would give our listeners, our ladies who really, you know, want to have that an increased energy to take back their relationship with God, or even just to take back their quality time with people. What would you say? Yeah, I think the first one is don't be hard on yourself. Don't think like, okay, I need to get a quick fix to finally get energized in all areas of my life. That's very overwhelming. I think just just ask God and really honestly get before him and ask him, God, this is what I'm struggling with. This is what I'm, um, what I'm feeling right now. I think that's the very first step is just bringing your burdens to God instead of tr- trying to do a quick life hack on your own. Um, I've constantly been encouraged, especially these past few weeks, just reading through the Psalms. Um, I think David, the way that he just pours his ha- heart out to God and asks God to help him through the big things, the little things, and in the meantime, still praise God and in, in throughout all of that is just so beautiful. And I think it's a good reminder for us that we can be honest, that like God wants us to come to him with our burdens and our anxieties to cast our cares upon him. Um, the second thing is, I think it really makes a huge difference. I was just reading an article about this there there's this um phrase that we've been all ingrained with which is practice makes perfect but I think there's two faulty parts to that one is you'll never be perfect so um don't expect perfection basically in your life like the point the whole point of life is to rely on God every single day to ask him for daily bread but the second thing is practice makes perfect also kind of has this um imp- implication that you need to do it on your own. And I think when you do things on your own, sure, it could work, but you are just you're choosing the long road. When you do things with other people, especially a coach, a mentor, a spiritual director, a therapist, whoever it is who can actually help you from a professional experience lens, um, it just makes all the difference. And I think as women, especially, um, I mean, people say this about men, but I think women struggle with this a lot too. We do have this sense of pride oftentimes, like, oh, I don't want to ask for help or people are busy. I don't want to bother them. And I definitely have struggled with that a lot myself, but 
personally, I have just seen incredible like transformation, not just in my life, but in other people's lives. And the common theme is always this person helped me or I sought help. And so that's the the other thing I would say is don't try to do this alone. Like look for a coach or a mentor or program or, um, you know, seek out books or podcast episodes to listen about the specific topic and ask God to bring in the right people into your life too. Um, I think getting help and also being kind to yourself, being um, accepting God's compassion and grace for you is, is just really key. Amen. Absolutely. Wow. Thank you so much. That's really good advice. All right. So uh, I know our listeners want to know how can they connect with you? Tell us about the podcast and where can they find you guys? Yeah, you can find us um, at our podcast. Let's unpack that with Alex and Grace. Our Instagram is at at sign with the trans. Our last name is Tran. Um, and yeah, feel free to reach out if you have any questions on this topic. I am personally very passionate about it. Um, can talk forever about it. So yeah, anything re- related to faith, related to um, being equipped, encouraged, and empowered to live out your faith every day. That's what we're all about. And we would love to connect with you. Thank you so much. I think this is awesome how you guys started this podcast together. I know this has been in the works and prayer for a long time. And I'm really just really glad to be following you guys. This is really great and even edifying for myself. I'm already learning some things from you guys. So I think, you know, um, I I don't know how old you are, Grace. You don't have to say your age, but I know you're younger than me. That's for sure. (laughs) You know what? It says in the Bible, don't let them look down on you because you are young to Timothy, right? Paul says, and Mm. it doesn't matter our age. You know, we all can contribute. We all have amazing gifts and talents. And I appreciate how you and Alex are doing just so many amazing things. So, so far, and you're just starting. So I'm really excited for you guys and thank you so much for being on the show yeah thank you so much rosie i feel the same about you so grateful we connected and can't wait to keep following your show as well thank you and we'll definitely stay in touch i'm really excited all right um so ladies i hope that you were encouraged with with grace and the tips that she gave you and i know that i was and um especially you know as, as she was talking about um, really taking it to God first. You know, I love how focused she is, um, was, and is on God. God first, seek Him first. That is so important. I really emphasize that because really He's the one you want to go to first for everything. Of course, you go to other professionals, you go to other help, you go to your friends, family when you need support. That's very important because we need our community. That's why God created the church, right? That's why Jesus created the church. There's a reason for that. But first and foremost, always go to God. So thank you again, Grace and sisters. I will see you in the next one.